Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is September 5th of 2018. And I hope this is going to be a short video and it's just going to be probably, it's going to be a rant. All my videos, I think, are rambling. Uh, uh, so, uh, I'm not even going to, man, the, you know, the, stuff that's going on politically here in the United States is unbelievable. Um, I'm not even going to talk about it, I don't think, because nobody wants to hear about it. We're all just tired of it. Now, I'm not sure if this is connected at all with this. This is sort of, I guess, what made me decide to make this little video, because I'm going to tell you a story. And that's not even an interesting story, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. Um, a few hours ago, like I said, it's 10 o'clock now. I think this happened about 8 in the morning at a local, I'm in Fort Worth, but in a Dallas radio station, KDFW-TV News station in Dallas. Uh, as you can see, someone crashed his truck into the station. And uh, they haven't updated. I guess I could tune the radio or, t or TV. KDFW, I'm not even sure. If that's, I mean, it's a local station, but I'm not even sure. I, well, I don't get over the uh, air right now with where I have my TV located. Um, well, if that's CBS, I do get that when I pay for CBS. Um, have a connection for over the air or whatever. Not over the air, but through the net. Hmm. Um, so anyway, the guy got out of his truck, I guess, yelling and screaming incoherently, uh, crazy stuff. Uh, and then he threw, apparently, this. This will be telling, you know, he threw a couple of these boxes right here, and I think all these papers... And I'm guessing these papers are not, I'm guessing the papers are political statements or something like that, so we don't know. So this will be interesting to see. You know, I'm very liberal, uh, so I'm hoping he's not a crazy liberal. I'm hoping if he's, well, probably he's mentally ill, so it doesn't matter, uh, doesn't matter what he is. If he's mentally ill, he's mentally ill. But I hope if he's, uh, somebody protesting something rather hope he's not a hope he's not a liberal I hope he's a conservative you don't want to be embarrassed by your people well some people don't care being embarrassed by their people oops I'm starting to slip over into uh, oh okay what I wanted to mention was uh, a long time ago oh wow I think back in the maybe the 80s or 70s or 80s well, from 1972, I worked security before. Well, I worked as a, when I got out of high school, I worked as a welder for 10 or 15 years for different companies. I built, as a welder, I uh, was building railroad cars, and then I worked uh, building different kinds of trucks uh, at different companies because I kept changing to better jobs. Um then in before, well, before 1972, someplace in there, uh, for a while I was doing contract security for a short period of time. And then 72, for 30 years, I worked hospital security. And then even when I was working hospital security, at that point, I worked uh, part-time contract security for extra money for years. Uh, one entire year, I worked for Pinkerton part-time. And we saved all that money, and my wife and I took, well, we only had two, had a, one, a third one on the way. But we drove down to Mexico and down through Juarez, uh, Durango, stayed overnight at Durango, went down to Mazatlan, and I think I'm mispronouncing it wrong because when I was asking directions for Mazatlan, people a few miles away, when it turned out, I, you know, where is Mazatlan, you know? They didn't know what Mazatlan was. So I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. But then we stayed at Mazatlan overnight 
and then we came out through Nogales. But uh, so that was what I used money for for one year part time for that trip and everything. But one of the jobs I had, I was working full time hospital security, but I worked at KCMO. I think it was KCMO News. Well, wherever Johnny Yates, the weatherman, whatever station he worked for. And because uh, he was very well known and very popular in Kansas City as a weatherman. But I was uh, working there at the station and uh, during that time I was working there, uh, they were very nice to me, the station was, and that was, that was great. Uh, it was, of course, radio, TV, FM station. Well, somebody, not at that station, but somebody at another station one night when I was working, a guy broke into the radio station. I can't remember the exact details. He didn't hurt anybody, I don't believe. I, I think he just might have fired a round off or something, protesting something. And, uh, so that happened during that time when I was doing that. But I wanted to mention, and I've mentioned this story before, so maybe I can abbreviate it, but I told this story before because it's sort of a morale to the story, a morale or a moral. Um, and it was working at, I think it was KCMO News, out in the and I was out in the parking lot, beautiful day. I'm standing out there as employees are coming and going. And... Uh, it was still, I believe, it was daylight, I think, yeah. But anyway, I saw the moon up there, and it uh, was a crescent moon, and there was, what I knew was a planet, appeared to be a star right there or whatever. And I saw that, of course, the, the moon is coming down, and uh, the planet was coming down with it. But I look up there and I thought, you know, I was, I don't know how old at that time, 30 years, in the 30s or my 40s. And by the way, I'd always been interested in shortwave radio, astronomy. Uh, and then I, I did a computer bullet, or I did a, a bulletin board system starting in 1982. And uh, that was unusual, you know, it was the beginning of bulletin board systems, really. I was one of the first in Kansas City. I think I was like number three. And eventually there was like a hundred or more in Kansas City. It was all over the United States, all over the world, I guess. But I was into computer and uh, an astronomy club in Kansas City, the astronomy club. They asked if they could put their material on my computer bulletin board system. And so they sat there, I said, yes. And because I was interested in astronomy, well, always had been, I used to subscribe to uh, space, Sky and Space or whatever it was, magazine, and was always interested in astronomy and bought a few telescopes, you know, inexpensive ones. And then when, my, when I was, uh, Haley's Comet, and then the other comet, which was more that came through, you know, we had a telescope for that, and I took, well, you could see it visually, you didn't need a telescope to see that comet. I forget the name of it. That was a remarkable one. Always interested. But anyway, uh, so I, I saw that up there. And I thought, that's unusual. It looks like a Turkish, I don't know whether it was a Turkish or one of those flags of one of those places that we, most Americans don't know anything about. Although because I did shortwave radio all the time, I did know a lot about, because I'd listened to their broadcast, you know, stuff like that. But can't remember. Anyway, I thought, man, that's interesting. So I went into the uh, station, and uh, they were getting ready to do the 6 p.m. news. And I went in and I said, are you getting any phone calls about the, uh, the moon and a planet up there that it's really interesting? And uh, no, 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 not getting any calls at all. And I said, oh, I thought maybe you would. They said, well, talk to Johnny Yates when he comes in. That's, he's interested in astronomy also. And I said, okay. So went on outside, and I was out there, and, of course, the moon is coming down, coming down, coming down, and the planet is moving, you know, with it. And then Johnny Yates pulls in, and I went over and said, uh, Mr. Yates, 
uh, that up there really looks interesting or whatever. And I said, is, you know, uh, he looked at it. Uh, that's nothing. That happens all the time. It's called, I forget what he said it was called, conjunction and blah, blah. It, that hap that's nothing, nothing, nothing. I said, okay, thank you. Sorry to bother you. And he was real nice. You know, he went on in. And then about uh, 30 minutes or 45 minutes later, I'm standing out. And I've totally forgotten about it now. I mean, I kept checking out because that's kind of neat. But I'm watching other stuff, you know. And the, the director, the producer, and uh, two or three other staff people come running out of the, the door of the station and yell at me, where is it? Where is it? And I said, where's what? The moon, the moon. I said, oh, it's over there. It's getting really low now. And I said, well, can you see it? And they, yeah, we can see it. And they go, well, they get on the radio, actually, walkie-talkie. And they call, the, turns out calls their news cruiser or whatever. And uh, then just a few minutes later, the news cruiser comes roaring into the parking lot too fast. And uh, that's one of my pet, you know, things. And where is it? Where is it? And I said, oh, it's over there. It's really low now. And the one guy, oh, yelling at the other, you know, the driver or whatever, or maybe the driver was yelling at the, I don't know. I think I know a high spot we can get to. We can get to. And they, they take off too fast, you know. And uh, so every, on the front page of the Kansas City Times in the morning, the newspaper picture, you know, of the moon and the planet, and then they discussed it. And then every <laughs> other TV station that night on 6 o'clock news and the 10 o'clock news or whatever had the pictures, their pictures of it, and they talked about it, except KCMO News. <laughs> they didn't get the story. So my, I've mentioned this before. Listen to your night watchman. Actually, listen to everybody. That's my, you know. Uh, so... That's, this reminds me of that time. I enjoyed working there part-time. Almost ended up being on television. They had told me that uh, it was election time. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. It was um, election time, and uh, they said if anybody delivers anything, you know, uh, news release or anything like that, be sure and bring it on in to us. So uh, I was out there. And uh, somebody drove up and they had a news release or whatever. First time that that had happened to me since I was there. Or it was the first time I guess I was there during the election time and gave it to me. So I went up to the door and then um, when I went to the door, I knew enough Although that, I don't think that ever told me. They didn't really get an orientation, you know. But I knew enough. If the light, but I didn't look at my watch or anything. I didn't pay any attention. Uh, there was no red light flashing or anything. And so I went on, you know, I went on in. And I walked into the studio. And, you know, they had these different desks. And they had a black lady at one desk. And then another desk they had, uh, I guess, the co-anchors or whatever over at that desk. Or whatever. And they're just sitting there. And so uh, I walked to the black lady because she was the closest, and she was sitting there, you know. She was sitting there like looking at the camera or whatever. And I, you know, I, uh, and she just sat there looking at the camera. I mean, she could, I was in front of her, you know, but she was just looking at the camera. <laughs> and I went to go. I thought, what's wrong with it? And then, I, oh, wait a minute. Then I looked around, you know, oh, shit. So then I stepped back. And there was a panel, there was something there. I stepped back, so I was out of camera view. And I just stood there, and then it was, you know, you know, good morning, this, you know, or good, you know, KCMO News 5 or whatever. And then we'll be right back with, uh, you know, the today's news or something like that. And then, of course, they switched to whatever they ran, a commercial, whatever it was. So then I stepped out, and... A lady was still looking at me like, oh, my God, you know. And the and the, the anchor over there said, uh, I'll take it. And then I walked over, handed to him, and then I left. So then after that, I made sure to know, okay, it's, you know, they're starting the news at 6, and then also, of course, they did the news at 10. So then I made sure that I watched 
and so that didn't happen to me, so I didn't get on the news. I think that would have been really interesting and funny, you know, night watchmen there standing in front of the news. <laughs> Maybe we should have let it happen. While I was working there, uh, the uh, governor of Kansas showed up for the election time. And he just had a driver. I think it, I'm not sure if it was a uniformed highway patrol or a guy in civilian clothes or whatever. But it was just a governor, and this other guy pulls in. And I didn't know. I was, by the way, from Missouri, but uh, I, anyway, uh, he. I don't know if I. I knew it was a governor. I, I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't know. He pulled in. He was really nice. Shook my hand. <laughs> I guess he thought I was a voter, and everything went on in and. He made a, uh, I'm not sure if he was interviewed or if he actually made uh, a commercial. Uh, I think he just went in, maybe he was interviewed. And then he left. And then on another day when I was there, still during the election time, some guy, Republican, uh, the governor may have been Republican for all I know, but anyway, uh, this guy, a limo pulls in and they open up the doors of the limo. Somebody, there was like five or six people. Somebody runs around and opens up the door for the the guy who was running for something, Senate or something. I forget what he was running for. But um, anyway, they all have drinks, you know, alcohol, which I, well, I'm not a drinker, never been a drinker. Both my parents were drinkers. But anyway, they all had drinks. And, of course, they're in a limo. And uh, they get out, and uh, this is so and so. He's you know not him. He didn't say it, although he was an asshole. <laughs> uh, this is so and so. He's running for such and so. I said, okay, I said, I'll unlock the door and let you in. You know, so <laughs> went up and unlocked the door and let them in. And then they were there for hours, and uh, since I was also, you know, interested in radio and television, and uh, I did a radio program that was uh, broadcast for when I was just in high school or just out of high school for a year that was broadcast. I recorded it at a local radio station, KMBC, and it was then sent to... New York City and broadcast to Europe, Africa, and Latin America three times a week over shortwave radio. So I was always interested. But anyway, so they're making this commercial. And I thought, okay, I thought, which is correct, this guy's a real prick, you know. I hope he fucking loses, you know. So then I made, a, so I'd be outside on occasion. I'd go and make rounds inside the uh, station and outside and come back out. And everything. So I went in and... Uh, the way monitors are, now we probably all know that, but back then, the, you know, the monitors in the TV stations, of course, are directly wired in. They're not getting the signal over the air. They're not getting it from a satellite, you know. They're directly, they had a, a wall full of these monitors. So they're making this guy's commercial. And uh, he, I forget if he had a barrel or what, anyway, or maybe it was a stool and he puts his foot on the, and then they keep, you know, running, doing a little bit of it. And then, do you like that? No, no. And they keep redoing it and everything. So I'm seeing him. Of course, I can see him live over there. But I see him up on all these monitors. And, of course, the monitors really give you good, you know. They were good monitors. And then they were wired directly from the camera goes directly into them, you know. So, uh, so then I go outside. And a few hours later, I come in and make them. And they're still making the things. And they're still asking me, you know, to... They move this, and they have this with this stool and that kind of stuff. And then they run, a, you know, run, run a little bit. I'm watching, you know. And I'm thinking, God, he really looks good. This, you know, sounds good and looks good. And I'm thinking, fuck, I hope this asshole doesn't win, you know. And then finally they all leave in their limo. And... Uh, when the election took place, he lost massively. He must have, <laughs> he must have, I mean, the, if you'd looked at the commercials, you'd have thought, hey, wow, you know. 
articulate and he looks good and oh, whatever. But I guess he probably ran around with his limo and his uh, buddies, attaches or what do you call them, people. And he probably made, he made, there I was one guy and he made the, uh, a bad impression with me and he probably went all over <laughs> making bad and then bad people and I didn't tell anybody but uh, I might have blogged on that on my blog on my uh, bulletin board system I don't know wouldn't have mattered I mean nobody would have paid any attention or noticed it or or whatever but uh, I was glad the guy lost uh, I was working too. I was one of, of course, I was working hospital security, working at St. Joe Hospital, a little, well, 350 bed Catholic hospital. Uh, the governor showed up there one time of Missouri, and he came too with just one, I think, one person with him. And he was really nice. And uh, so, not all. Well, the governor of Kansas is nice, too. What, yeah, I don't even remember what this other guy was running for. Uh, let's see. Wanted to mention something else to you. I'll be interested in what happened with this story here about the guy crashing into... Let me refresh this, see if... Uh, the president has, I think he didn't, he didn't tweet last night. I think people, everybody was watching, I think, to see if he tweeted. I don't think he did, uh, which is unusual. Uh, breaking news, CDC uh, Center for Disease Control meets a plane at JFK after passengers. Oh, pa I didn't notice that before. I thought that was kind of after passengers report feeling ill. Oh. Where did that plane come from? Let's see. Um, Reporting feeling ill. Oh, Emirate, flight 203, Dubai, carrying more than 500 passengers. I asked the flight attendant for a mask before we even took off. On the scene right now, after an Emirates Airlines flight arrived from Dubai. But none were available. That's kind of a... <laughs> the non-stop flight was a smooth one. People were coughing the whole time. Now some people... Wow. Now some people have fevers over 100 degrees. Uh... They should never have been allowed to board the aircraft, exactly. Uh, okay, that's going to be an interesting story to follow. Uh, I would, we have so many scanners and all that kind of stuff. I would think that, of course, it's hot in Dubai, Dubai, whatever. I would think that should be part of the, well, we need to streamline, well, we need, I think we, I'm, I'm, come to the point I think we need a national identity card. Everybody, every U.S. citizen I think should have a national identity card that they're required to carry. I didn't feel that way years ago uh, and it should be a fantastic good identity card but uh, well I don't want to get into that that subject but I, I think because it would speed up airports and other type of stuff. You show your card and uh, you're positively identified. It would have to be secure and really good so that you are positively identified. And I'm not sure at the state of the art of whether, you know, it's how that would be done, whether it would be, however, that's above my pay grade. But I think that would be good to have so you could just get through uh, airports and places like that easier but then at the airports it seems to me like they should have since they have scanners for everything else I think they should just have scanners that could uh, as people are going through know what their temperature is but then you don't want to stop everybody I mean but still I mean there should be some, you know 
they should have the technology to, I mean, if you have a whole, of course, that was in a foreign country, but if you have 100 people getting on, in, from, you know, with a temperature, I mean, of course, you'd adjust it for, because they may have just walked in from outside, and it's, what, 120 in the shade, and there's no shade there. Uh, but still, that, I'm going to be interested in that story. Because I didn't notice it said, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of, well, uh, a person, and they send to CDC. I mean, I could see them sending, you know, an EMT or somebody, to, but I didn't notice that it was like, oh, wow. So, another thing I wanted to mention, and I really can't give you any information on it, I just noticed that today Chrome has been updated, and they're saying that it's, you know, the Chrome, the browser, that it's uh, 10 years old and that it's new and improved. And, I, of course, they're showing, you know, the desktop version. But they said all the uh, ones are. So I haven't figured out. I, I have Chrome on my desktop and uh, Firefox. And I actually, I'm actually now finally using Edge quite a bit. There at first I positively could not use it. But I'm actually using, uh, using Edge and it's working out. So if you wonder why in this picture here I have my tongue stuck out, that was because I took, I, I need to take a, hang on here a second. I'll use this as the uh, thumbnail for this. So I bet that looks bad. Oh, that looks bad. Yep, that does not look good, so we need to take another. I should never smile. I've had people ask me, well, in my life, why don't I smile more? And I would say, well, because I'm married with children or whatever. I just don't smile good, so. Whoops, I don't think I clicked on okay. So let's see this one. Okay, that'll do. Here it is. This will be the thumbnail for today. Got a bunch of crap back here behind me. I'm thinking of doing stuff. I even think of moving the desk. And oh man, it's it's a massive desk. So I don't think I will. I'm feeling, by the way, much uh, much better. My Black hairy tongue, I think, has been taken care of. Signs of it are gone, but I still, my taste buds are still messed up. Some things are okay, most are not. Uh, when I was in the hospital last month, I was 240 pounds, maybe more than 240, maybe because I'd sometimes be up to 244 and I'm thinking, oh my God, I don't want to go past 245. And because I'd thought when I hit 230, I don't want to go above 230. And I thought when I hit 200, I don't want to go above 200. So anyway, I, uh, because of going in the hospital, I'm now 219 pounds. Uh, probably because of food and stuff just doesn't taste good at all. So, uh, let's see what, um, Huffington Post says here about anything. Emirate flight quarantined at JFK. CDC reports 100 sick passengers. Wow, that's going to be... I am in Texas, by the way. And like I said, I'm a liberal Democrat. So I don't like either of our... Uh, Senators, but oh man, Ted Cruz, oh, he is the worst. Atlanta, Trump's back to school question for students sparks backlash. I really, I don't like Donald Trump at all, but 
I really think, you know, leave his wife alone. I mean, and she's, try I think she's honestly trying. And she doesn't have any, I mean, she doesn't have a support system. I mean, well, she has a chief of staff and she has a staff and all that kind of people. But I would imagine that uh, Donald Trump and his people, uh, she doesn't have it. So give her a pass on just about everything unless she's out there beating her kids or doing something. No matter what she says or does, I, they, everybody should just uh, kind of leave her alone. She's in, a, she's in a bad situation. Anyway, my stomach is growling, so I've got to find some, what have I got around here that tastes normal. I can't think of anything. Anyway, I do thank you for watching. I'm going to, oh, by the way, I have a new ham radio, which is going to be delivered today. Looks something like this. It's a handy talkie. It's coming by the United States Post Office. probably already been delivered. So I may show that to you and talk a little bit about it when I get it. Uh, and I also have a Microsoft, not a Microsoft, a Logitech mouse, and I have the 502. So the 602 is coming. I got it for thirty-six dollars. And it's got excellent reviews. It's not brand new because the brand new things that Logitech are putting out are the uh, charging pad and the mice that work off that charging pad and uh, stuff like that. So I think they're discounting or you can get anyway. It's supposed to be a really nice wireless mouse. That's the number 602. And unfortunately, uh, Newegg had it on sale for $36, and I have a charge account with them, so I ordered it, and uh, then I saw that, and anyway, I ordered it like, uh, okay, I think my uh, radio has just been delivered. Uh, that's not the doorbell, that's my, uh, tell me, let's see, the text message. Your order from uh, wherever let's see, has been delivered. So it is at the mailbox. So I may make another video here in a little while. I'm not sure. So I'm going to go get my new radio. Although I have, it's not really, I have two like this. This is a, this is digital. Uh, DMR and uh, the one I'm getting was only $30 and it's not digital it's just two meters and 440 but uh, I just got it it was so inexpensive I couldn't pass it up but also I think well the reason I got it is the uh, keypads on it keypad lights up really well they're saying that it's bright and that even around the edges there's light and I'll be outside with my HT and uh, hard to see the so it'd be nice to have one anyway I thank you for watching thank you very much let's see here 73's